With a 10.95 inch display, a 12 core 24 thread Ryzen AI APU and RDNA 3.5 graphics, this thing is turning out to be a really awesome 3-in-1. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new 2025 1X Player X1 Pro. And if you're not familiar with these devices, they call them 3-in-1s. It is a handheld, it's also a tablet, and with the detachable keyboard, you can turn this into a laptop. It's really up to you how you want to use this device. And as you can see, the screen on this is coming in a lot larger than other handhelds on the market, and that's because they opted to use a 10.95 inch display with this unit. Obviously, right out of the box, it's basically a tablet, but we do have these detachable controllers. And with this, there's actually two different D-pads that we can swap out. They're also utilizing hall-based analog sticks, and they connect to the side of the X1 using pogo pins and a clip system that they've come up with. Again, huge screen, 10.95 inches. It's got a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's an LTPS display, so it's not an OLED, but it does do up to 120 hertz here. I think it's a really good looking screen for something like this. Around back, there's not a whole lot going on, but we do have some RGB that's controllable from software. When it comes to I.O., up top, we've got our power button slash fingerprint sensor. We've also got our volume rocker and an Oculink port. This is going to allow us to connect a really fast eGPU. And all the way at the other end, we've got a turbo button, which is going to allow us to up the performance on this unit at any given time. Over here on this side, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 port plus a micro SD card slot. And this does have side-firing speakers, so it's dual stereo speakers built in. They're tuned by Harman, so they sound really good. And just to give you an idea of the pogo pin system, over here on the other side, you can see this is where our controllers are going to connect. So there are covers that come pre-installed. You can pull them off really easily. But over here, we've also got two full-size USB 4 ports. The new X1 Pro also comes with a detachable magnetic rear cover that acts as a kickstand. So you can fold this out. You can set it up basically any orientation you want. The hinge here is really rigid, so it's not going to fall over on you. And we've got that cutout for the rear intake vent, so we don't have to worry about overheating or anything like that. Moving over to the detachable controllers. Like I mentioned, there are covers that come pre-installed, so we can go ahead and remove them. And then we're just going to slide these controllers right in. They'll lock down really firmly. And once we've got both in place, we also have some RGB around those hall-based analog sticks. On the channel, I've taken a look at a couple of the X1s and the first generation, which I took a look at, it was a prototype, I will admit that, but the controllers did fit a bit loose. With the new controller design and updated locking mechanisms here, there's no play in those controllers once they're attached, and the overall feel and usability is much better. And when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is using the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. We've got 12 cores, 24 threads, all based on Zen 5. And with this, we get the Radeon 890M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 3.5, and we've got 16 CUs here. It'll also clock up to 2900 megahertz. You can get the X1 Pro with up to 64 gigabytes of LP DDR5X running at 7500 megahertz. We've got that 120 hertz, 10.95 inch LTPS display, resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's 138% sRGB, so it is a little oversaturated, and that's exactly how I like my screens. And it does up to 540 nits of brightness. This does use a 2280 PCIe M.2 SSD. You can do up to four terabytes in this unit. I've got a one terabyte model here with 32 gigabytes of RAM. We've also got a 65.02 watt hour battery with 100 watt quick charging capabilities. And with that, you can go from zero to 50% charge in 30 minutes flat. The first thing I wanted to do here was test out the D-pad. And while we're here, we could test out Street Fighter 6. I'm at an 18 watt TDP, medium, 1200p, well, 1080 because this game doesn't scale properly with 16 by 10 aspect ratio displays. Right now I've got the dish style D-pad, but like I mentioned, it comes with an optional D-pad, which is the one I prefer using. It'll snap right on. And it's basically a traditional D-pad. But one thing to keep in mind here with the X1 Pro, this is a clicky D-pad no matter which one you have on it. This is more like an arcade stick and it's definitely got some roll to it. Personally, I've been having a decent time using it. It's not my favorite D-pad on the market, but it works out pretty well for fighting games. Now I wanted to show off Spider-Man 2 and performance here with the HX370 is great, but we do need to take the wattage up and add frame gen. 
I'm at 1200p, medium settings, FSR 3.1 frame gen on, and a 30 watt TDP. We're getting over 80 FPS on average, and we can take that TDP down just a bit. At 25 watts, we can run this at about 68 FPS on average, but I really wanted to see how far we could take it, and the X1 Pro runs this game amazingly. One thing I really love about the HX370 is just the efficiency of the chip itself. Here's Hades 2, we're at 1200p medium settings, and I'm at a 5 watt TDP on the CPU. We're actually not quite pulling 5 watts, we're at about 4.8 on average, and total battery draw here is 10 watts. By the end of the video, we'll have a good idea of what kind of battery life we can see out of this at a 5 watt TDP, 15 and 25. But I'll tell you, with these lower end indie games and 2D games, 5 watts out of the HX370 and the X1 Pro is going to be plenty. Now I wanted to give you a look at 1X console here. So at any given time, we can press the turbo button on the unit, or you can open it up from the desktop or your menu. I'm just going to use the turbo button on the X1. At the very top, we've got our performance. We can go anywhere from 4 watts up to 30, anywhere in between. So if you do want to set up a 6 watt profile, you definitely can. I'm just going to leave it right here at 15. Fan mode, automatic seems to work great, but if you want to create your own preset, you can from here. So we've got a fan curve that we can adjust on the fly. Vibration settings, display, and since I'm connected to a game capture right now, we're at 16 by 9, so 1080. RGB effect, we can disable it or choose from the presets here. We can even use a solid color. Performance overlay, this is great for people who really don't want to set up Afterburner. Personally, I just use Afterburner, but if you don't want to set it up, you've got this option here. Turbo on the CPU can be disabled, and this is great for lower end games, but I'll tell you, the HX370 already does a great job at kind of knowing that it doesn't need to boost up that high per game. So it's really up to you. You can definitely experiment with this. There's a good chance you could get better battery life by disabling it with games that don't need that turbo. Gyroscope settings, sound vibration, battery protection. So we can set this up, bypass power supply, and that's how I have it right now. This isn't going to give you more runtime, but it will save the life of the battery. So if you know you're going to be plugged in for a long period of time, maybe in dock mode, you can bypass battery charging while you're plugged in. Brightness control, volume control, and we've got a few more here. From general, we can remap any of these buttons. Usual key. This is just going to allow you to kind of swap out different key sets uh, if you want to. Personally, I like the way it's set up. It's kind of like the Xbox controller. So we've got those two extra keys, M1 and M2, on the controller. And you can map it to any other button. D-pad, shoulder trigger. You can set up the inner dead zone and the outer dead zone. Analog stick, same thing here. Macro programming. We've also got the other section. So our update center. And... Controller driver, BIOS, other firmware. I'm all up to date with this. But one new thing that I noticed was the performance preset. This is pretty cool because we can actually set up different presets per game or even per application. Auto effect, bind process, desktop process. While we're in desktop mode, while nothing's up on the screen, you can set the TDP directly from here while you're in desktop mode. Same thing with the fan vibration settings, so this does come in really handy for creating game profiles. CPU setting, you can do 100%, turn CPU boost off, change the RGB. There's a performance section, and the global frame limiter does go from 55 up to 120. And we've got the gyroscope, and this gyroscope can work as a mouse, Xbox gamepad, or a DS4 gamepad. You can set up a hotkey to enable it, and you can program this to be your left or your right analog stick. So there's lots of gyroscope settings here also. Next thing I want to take a look at are some benchmarks. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6. At a 30 watt TDP, single core 2,899, multi 13,352. And just to kind of give you an idea, the last 1X Player X1 was powered by the 8840U. On that, single core was 2,443. Multi-core, 11,100. Very similar to something like the Z1 Extreme. And when it comes to this new iGPU, I did run 3D Mark Time Spy. We got a total score of 3,688. 
And over on the last gen 8840U powered X1, 3,341. Checking out some more gaming performance and I went with something old just to see what we could do with it. Half-Life 2, 2560 by 1600, very high, 15 watt TDP, seeing an average over 150 FPS. I went into this with V-Sync on, so we were up to 120 Hertz, just kind of locked right there, and was only pulling 12.8 watts. Next one we have is Black Myth Wukong 1200p low frame gen on. That's how we have to run this game on an iGPU, but it does run really well on the HX 370. Over 70 FPS on average, it's fully playable like this. And if you don't mind dropping that resolution down a bit, you can do without frame gen and lock this at 60. I also wanted to test out Marvel Rivals, and this is early access. Unfortunately, I can't get a 16 by 10 aspect ratio with this from the settings, so I just took it down to 900p, we're at low settings, locked at 60. And finally, God of War Ragnarok 1200p, low settings, frame generation turned on. I've got CPU boost enabled, and I'll tell you, if I disable it, I do get a bit of a higher frame rate, but there's some areas where it will dip down because it just needs more CPU, so I usually leave CPU boost on, and right now we're seeing an average of 73 FPS. Now it's time to talk about battery life, and given what we know here, 65.2 watt hour battery, we can use hardware info while we're playing games to kind of get an idea of exactly how much is being pulled from that battery at any given time. Through my testing, 50% screen brightness, 50% volume, RGB off, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth still on. At a 5 watt TDP for 2D games and indie games, this is drawing a total of 10 watts from the battery. That'll give us around 6 hours and 30 minutes of runtime. At a 15 watt TDP, the total draw jumps up to 28 watts from the battery, so 2 hours and 20 minutes. And at a 25 watt TDP, we're close to 38 watts on total draw from the battery, so 1 hour and 40 minutes. And remember, this does support 100 watt fast charging, so you can take that battery from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes. So far, the new Ryzen AI 9 HX370 powered 1X Player X1 Pro has been working great with AAA games. I do personally like the form factor. I love the fact that we've got a 10.95 inch tablet. And if you do pick up the uh, detachable keyboard, you've also got kind of a two-in-one laptop. And then when it's time to game, you can just slap those controllers right on the side. They are offering a couple different storage and RAM variants of this. This one here has 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage, but you can opt for 64 gigs of RAM and four terabytes of storage. Of course, that's going to be the highest end configuration they have, but 32 gigs is going to be more than enough for a lot of people out there. There's still a few things that I'd like to test here, like an Oculink eGPU. I've got the One X eGPU 2. It's got the RX 7800. Pairing that up with the HX 370 will offer some really great 1440p gaming. So I will be throwing that in my full review. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video at the 2025 One X Player X1 Pro. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave links in the description to their website. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.